for sure. <laughs> 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 I saw you in Lafia from years back. Have you ever played in Lafia? Nine shots, that's the way to go. That will do. That will do. Yes. Nice one. That's the way to yes. go. <laughs> the pot. Okay. Whoa, that's nice one. to watch those women play golf there welcome you on the show weekend sport on trust tv um adeni aji shafe well we always want to make sure we promote our own if you watch those particular clip you really want to understand the fact that golf is really an elite sport where both men and women can actually thrive well we just have to take you around the world of sport for this weekend it's a football weekend across over there in europe and also in Africa, CAF Intercultural Competition will be coming up. And CAF Champions League, CAF Competition will be talking about that. But uh, right now, we have to start from the home scene where our ladies 
Edo Queens. They really made us proud by conquering West Africa. Edo Queens were able to defeat uh, the team from Benin Republic, I know the FC of Benin Republic in that game. Uh, that they played as Wafubi now. Wafubi qualifiers. Edo Queens, they, they won that game 3 0 against I know of uh, uh, the Benin Republic. The game is taking, actually took place in Cote d'Ivoire as the host nation. Congrats to Edo Queens for the fact that they were able to do this. And right now, they've been able to pick this ticket from West Africa. That's the sole ticket from West Africa. And they'll be playing uh, the Continental. Congratulations to them for qualifying for the Continental. Edo Queens right now will be chasing history to see how a team from West Africa will be able to win it for the first time. Uh, it's been a big one because uh, all the teams from the West African side have not been able to pick the Continental for women that started just uh, a few years ago. And right now, Edo Queens will be pursuing this particular dream. Hopefully, they'll be able to do it, and we just hope that they will do us proud there. Well, as it is, uh, we've been joined from Kaduna. We have uh, on standby there. Joseph Peter, good to have you. Joseph Peter, are you there? Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, Joseph uh, yeah, Peter, I don't know if, Kaduna, if you can hear me, but I really cannot hear you well. Okay, we actually we're talking about Edo Queens uh, being able to win the Wafu B qualifiers, and right now they pick the sole ticket to represent West Africa at the Continental. That's Calf Women Champions that will be coming up, and by that they will be pursuing the dream of becoming the first West African team to be able to do it. That's if they are able to win it. So as it is, congrats to them, Edo Queens. Oh, okay, I, I I didn't really hear your question, but I'm sure seeing the pictures that you're talking about the two queens and their qualifications to the CAF Champions League is a good one. Uh, the, the fact that they are they won the league uh, have given them that opportunity to represent Nigeria in the CAF uh, Women Confederation uh, CAF Women uh, Champions League. Um, uh, so it's, a, it's it's really a welcome development. I hope that they prepare well and go and do the, the country proud and do themselves proud, which is the most important thing, and kind of give an edge. To Nigeria female football and help you know in developing the even national team uh, female football. So we wish them the best and we hope that uh, you know they do well in this competition. A uh, good one for Edo Queens for the fact that they were able to win that particular game 3 0. And in this competition, they defeated all the team that they met in fact against the Asakas of Ghana. They also did well in the Battle of Jolov there between Nigeria and Ghana. Always very interesting. Congrats to Edo Queens for being able to do this, and we are so proud of them for making us uh, at least get this particular <laughs> particular win there. Look at the celebrations there. Well, right now, join us in the studio. We have uh, Julius Okafo. Okafo, the ladies, <laughs> I love the way they were celebrating. They will fall first, then they will rise up. Now, they're representing Africa, rather West Africa, uh, the sole ticket uh, there for uh, the Continental. And congrats to Edo Queens for being able to do this. Congratulations to Edo Queens, congratulations to Nigeria, congratulations to West Africa. I think um, it's good for female football um, going forward. Um, uh, looking at this competition, I think they have scored uh, from the preliminary, they have scored up to 15 goals comprising of their last matches all to put together. That shows uh, what they can offer, that shows how good they are, that shows how prepared they are. So we believe that going forward they can be able to make us proud. We look forward to a good game, we look forward to a good outing for them. I think uh, they will need a little time to fall back and make a better preparation because going forward you keep encountering better teams and keep meeting better opponents. Mm -hmm. So you need a better preparation going forward. So congratulations to them. Congratulations to the Doe Queens. They have been able to pick that seat ticket to represent West Africa. The Wafu B qualifiers, they won it convincingly, beating all the teams they met. And now they will be representing us over there at the Continental Cup Women's Champions League that will still be coming up before the year ends. We wish them the best there. She's talking about uh, calf interclub competition. Uh, seriously, this time around, we look at uh, Rangers International. Even though they actually struggled to win against the Manjo of Comoros, they were able to win on aggregate 2 1 in that game that ended 1 1. Uh, in the second leg, the first leg, they were able to win 1 0. And uh, they played a draw yesterday. Uh, it actually ended 1 0. And it was a tough one. They almost, almost couldn't make it, but now they've qualified. Ranger International advanced to CAF Champions League second round. A tough one there. And really, let's start with you, Julius. Uh, it was a game that uh, a lot of people were hoping that, okay, they play these games in Nigeria. So what happened to Remo Erada, Rangers International, but still they were able to uh, scale through 2-1 against Zilimanjo? Um, every, for everybody, including me, 
I believe um, from the very first time we heard the news that the opening team is going to be playing in our home soil, in uh, mm -hmm. we all thought it's going to be um, a, a better walkover. walkover, a better game. But uh, for me, you know, football is, you only know about yourself, you don't know about your opponents most times, the game's plan and the way they prepared. But I think the, the, the Commodores actually prepare better than we do. We only saw our team, the Enugu Rangers, possessing the game, but the creativity and the ability to convert chances was what put them where they are. I think if the Commodores has played home, I think for me, they would have had a better chance with what I saw and the way I won the game. So for me, uh, congratulations to Rangers for qualifying, but I think they need to go back to drawing bond and do a better preparation going forward if they actually wants to, wants to go forward. I don't think that performance or this performance will actually project us to where we want to be. We want to see the team do well. We want to see the team win it this time. It's not, it's not single-handedly meant for, this, for the North Africans. Other teams, for the Nigerian team, should also... Uh, not just being a mere participant, but being a top participant in the competition. So I think we need to fall back home, do proper homework, going forward, create chances. While we possess the ball, create chances, look for goals and score goals when it matters, because goals matters as long as Champions League is concerned. Seriously, if you go on for Rangers, although they've been able to make it, they qualify for the second round, but it's a tough decision because against the manager of Comoros, you look at the island of Comoros and you compare Nigerian size. In fact, Enugu State, where Rangers is from, they can actually cut out many Comoros there. But really, something must be done according to their coach, Electrical. They will have to uh, uh, get their acts together for them to do well in their remaining games uh, that has to do with the second round of the Cup Champions League. Well, I was talking about it. A big one there for Rangers. At least they've been able to do it, but uh, they just have to up their games if they are to still remain to get so uh, play in more mouthwatering games that has to do with calf competitions because it's more mouthwatering now. Much more money available for this competition. Well, Joseph, uh, Rangers, they were able to scale through uh, to against the Ziliman Joe of Comoros, and uh, a tough one it was. They struggled against uh, Ziliman Joe of Comoros. What, really, what did you see that could have caused it? Even though they played the two games in Nigeria, the first leg, Comoros had to play their own home in Uyo, the second leg has to be Rangers' home. They also play, and uh, Nigeria, uh, that's uh, Rangers, they struggled. Yeah, it is not uh, supposed to be so. No, oh, let me say it wasn't expected. You know, uh, uh, we thought that uh, because uh, the game is going to be a home game, home game, then maybe uh, Rangers find it uh, easy. But really, in the game of football, it's not all about that, and um, it's not even about demography. Yes, you know, you could they say that. So oh, okay, maybe uh, you will find a lot of maybe more than one um, uh, Comoros, like more than three Comoros in Enugu alone. But it doesn't really matter. It has nothing to do with, you know, the squad that are actually playing this football. And, you know, football is a game of 11, right? And the better 11 will always, you know, outshine and perform better than the uh, minor or that, than, than the less uh, uh, better one. So, it, for me, this was a game of 290 minutes. Mm. And um, sometimes, you know, you prepare, when you prepare uh, 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 for this kind of game, uh, in, in, in a particular kind of way, you know, looking at it, you know, looking at the bigger picture, looking at two equal 90 minutes, not just, uh, you know, uh, certain 90 minutes and then you relax and you think you've actually done the job. That is the, the problem. That, that was what, I, you know, happened to Enugu Rangers. Complacency entered their game. You know, they relaxed, you know, after winning the first leg, they felt, okay, it's going to be easy, you know, for them at home. And then it, it, it's not really like that when it comes to football. But uh, I hope that they, tend, you know, they, they get to realize it now that it's kind of early. Thank God it's happening now. Thank God it's not already in the good stage. Because if this were in the good stage, they would have been knocked out straight away. But thank God they salvaged it and they have been able to qualify to the next round. Now it's time for them to go back and sit down and look at themselves, look at the mirror and ask themselves what they really want. Because they are tired of, you know, this calf competition without Nigerian teams doing, you know, what they are supposed to do, without, you know, good representation. It has been a while we've had a proper representation in the CAF championship. So this is completely the responsibility of Rangers International to know what they are doing, go back and prepare better, and face those games that are forthcoming, and actually qualify to the, you know, group stages, and not just the group stages. 
and get to semi-finals and maybe even the finals of the Champions League because we cannot have, you know, the regular mediocre position that we have been, you know, proven to be to be to be to be long recently in the in, in African football. So and, and this is dangerous in that we are talking about. We consider them the same class with Aimba. We consider them, you know, the same class with Al Ahli, with all those, you know, TP Mazembe's and the, the shutdowns and in, 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 uh, and what have you. So they really need to prove it. They need to show it, and they need to, you know, make it, you know, make us see that yes, they are able to, for, to the task, and they will, you know, give give uh, give give us what we require and make Nigeria proud in this kind of competition. But it, it's really been a one. Okay, while you are there, uh, let, let's uh, digress a bit. Uh, we know we have two teams that are playing Ranger, uh, rather, uh, CAF, uh, CAF Champions League, and now we talked about Rangers. Now we have Remo Stars. Remonsa will also be playing against AS5 of Morocco. That will be on Sunday. A tough one it is because we know that uh, the first leg ended 2-1 in Nigeria. And we know what uh, uh, the North African teams can do. Uh, we, uh, in fact, we heard that uh, Remo Stars say they are ready for their antics. Already they know the antics will be there. Remo Stars already they are over there in Morocco. And this match is also coming up. 2-1 first leg. Second leg will be very tough. Joseph, what do you think? Because from the way it is right now, Remo stars are really, really very, very, they need to be very, very careful because we know that uh, anytime you are playing against any North African to be in Morocco, Libya, Algeria, Egypt, you just have to be at your best. To be able to beat them to their own antics at home, they will do everything, they will throw everything at you just to get you demoralized and they will do everything just to make sure the game is won by them. Uh, Remo stars against AS5 Morocco on Sunday. Remo Star has their chance. Uh, you know, I, I'm not writing them, I, I'm not saying they are not going to get the result, but they had their chance to, you know, score a lot of goals at home against a very, very tricky Moroccan side, against a very, very tricky you North know, African side. We know how much damage these things have done to us. So it's actually not, you know, good when we see them come to our home time after time after time, consecutively coming to our home. Our, our teams don't get to beat them very well the way they do beat us. So that is actually the problem. Whenever you know, these teams come home to play against Nigerian clubs, Nigerian clubs should make sure that they get the maximum result. 3-0, 4-0, 4-1. Even 3-1 is not even enough. I've seen that in Nigerian team that fall, you know, after winning 3-1 uh, against, against uh, you know, African side. But that is the part. Now is the chance to go back there and actually face whatever that will be thrown at them. They should be ready for them to play against the referee, against the home side, and against the fans. These are check. We know what these North Africans do. They would fill up the stadium and shout to be bring. And the players would have no mess. Are they willing to stand all these tests? That is the question they need to ask themselves. But really, if they are in the right mind frame, knowing that, knowing fully well that football is played against 11, on the pitch and you know try to keep their heads high and their head uh, and, and their and most important their concentration in check i think they, they would have to start the chance but if they don't get to do that then they are absolutely will not start the chance to qualify to the next round but we wish them the best and we hope that they do the job for this country wishing them the best there yeah. uh, right now uh julius okafo your take on this game because we know how tricky is going to be between as far of morocco and also raymond stars of nigeria when we when we when we come to CAF Champions football here, when you first of all as a Nigerian team you are going away, what we always see is when we are being beaten like falls, you see the away team trying or the home team I mean to say, go four goals up, four one up. When we have our chances of taking that advantage in our own home soil, we messed it up. For me, I don't think Remo Star is sitting comfortable right now. Because if you have had like four goals and you are going away, you will be sitting comfortable knowing fully well that no matter what goes around, it will be difficult for people to overturn four goals. So I think we are not really taking our chances when it comes to homes and away games in the Cup Champions. We are not taking our chances. I don't know if it is political. I don't know if it is a game plan. I don't know if it is our preparation. I don't know what it is, but I don't think we are taking our chances. 
as at the time we are home, we should let the team know that we are ready for this game. We should beat them mercilessly, no matter what it takes. If you need us to get the fans to fill the stadium, if you need us to shout, if you need us to do whatever we need to do, do it because they all have a role to play as long as football is concerned. The North Africans, they know how to do this thing. Let's watch and see. You're going to see the turn up in the stadium. You're going to see how they'll be shouting at the players. They're going to use everything that they have to make sure that you overturn the 2-1 or whatever Google aggregate that the Remoster has ahead of them. And at the end of the team, we'll all come back and say, oh, we tried it. We are not going to, we don't want to see we try. Remoster, please, we beg you, put on all the ammo and put on everything you need to do. Win for us is very, very important for us. For Nigerian football, for our league, is good for us. We are sick and tired of seeing a team that goes only on a group stage and we come back and we say, oh, let's prepare next time. There is no next time this time, please, I beg of you. <laughs> do all you can to do well for us. We are expecting you to get all the result. Congratulations and wish you guys all the best. Thank you. Uh, seriously, Nigerians with football mentality, we always want to win everything. Well, we just have to prepare ahead of this. Remo Stars, they need to tie up their belts stronger. Now, talking about uh, calf interclub competition, for this summer, we go lower a bit by talking about calf confederation. That's the second tier of calf interclub competition. And we have a team there. Uh, we have two teams, although Eimba, for the fact that they have a good record in Africa. So they are out of this. They won't play this uh, forcibly in the military. But we have El Kanemi Warriors. El Kanemi Warriors, right now, they are a very tight rope. They play one all in Nigeria. And now they are going away to Daji FC. Uh, it's going to be a match that, what would they do? How can they defeat Daji? First leg ended one all. Just like you were saying, Julius, you can see now they have one one, and all Daji needs to do is to play goalless. You see, just like I said, I don't know if it is politics. We need to. We don't know how to play when it comes to African football, or we don't know what it means to play home and away. I don't know. Sorry to whoever that is in charge, but I think it's high time we begin to understand and begin to take on our advantage when team comes to your home. Take your advantage. Do whatever you need to do. Win your matches as sit comfortable. When you go away, expect the team. I remember there was a time, uh, Eimba, as at the time Eimba was at the top in African football, they went to play Calf Confederation Cup somewhere in, in North Africa. And at some point, the match was put to a hold because of the crowd fast. There was a lot of noise, there was a lot of intro, there was a lot of things coming on. They were trying to suppress the team to make sure they get their result. That is what football is all about. We have seen it anywhere in Europe. It's, not, it's, it's nothing, it's everywhere. When you come to my home, I use everything that I have to make sure I get the result that I need, knowing fully whether I'm going to come to your home. Now, economy is sitting on a time bomb that can explode at any time. Going to what, Benin Republic, and you allow them to come here and pick a one go, all they need is just go there have a zero zero point and at the end of the thing you're out of it that is not what we wish for ourselves but we still hope that they will turn things around because mm. this is football they can go there and play two zero they can go there and play two one it's okay for us but please i think uh, we need to up our game when it comes to cough competition cup or cough champions league well we just need to do more when it comes to this playing this mentality needs to change remember that uh, the go away go rule still stands here in africa so joseph peter El Kanemi Warriors, a big one for them. They are really, really treading on a very slippery road right now against the RGFC of uh, Benin Republic. One all here in Nigeria, and now they play away to the RGFC. You know, it's, it's, it's the same story. Same story all around the CAF Champions League, CAF Cup competitions. So everything is just, you know, uh, like uh, circles in Nigeria when it comes to all these kind of competitions. And I, I know the problem. I know the problem. The problem is actually that our standard is not as high as other countries' standard in this Africa. Yes, the league that we are actually hosting and playing in this country is not, you know, the standard has dropped. So when your standard has dropped, generally it takes all the things. Because you can't tell me that, you know, for like four years, as far back as I can remember, four seasons now, Nigeria has not done anything good when it comes to calf competition. Definitely, then that means the league that we are, you know, staging is not up to the standard of these other countries. Because if our league is good, we'll produce better players, and better players will, produce, will, will play better football, and better football will give. So, because we are not winning, it means that our league is actually not where it's supposed to be. And when we work our league to where it's supposed to be, we would have great players and we would have great games and great clubs and win great competition. That's just it. 
But it is what it is for El Kanami warriors. You know, this is their first time. This is their, this is their first experience when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, intercontinental football. And they were paired against, you know, a relatively easier side. Now, if they are struggling against that day of the Republic, what would they be able to do even when they qualify up there? You know, but nevertheless, we can't, you know, uh, wish them bad. We still wish them well. We wish them, you know, uh, uh, good. And we, we hope that they be able to get a result at, 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 at in the Republic. But it's going to be very, very, very difficult. But then, like my colleague in the studio said, it is a game of football. Anything can actually happen. We are all going to just rely on that and hope that you know we get the best out of it. Okay, well, Nigeria will always want to be on hope level, but uh, you know, at times you just have to prepare if you are to do anything. Uh, well, from the way it is right now, El Kanemi, Remus Stars, they are really, really trading on the tight rope. They need to work harder if they are to qualify for the next round of the CAF Champions League and also CAF Confederation. For Rangers, they actually scaled through at least one way or the other. They were able to do it 2-1 on aggregates uh, Zilimanjo of Comoros. And now they want to see who they'll be playing next by the time the next draw will be done. <laughs> A tough one. For Eimba, they are still cool enough. Uh, right now, because they are not playing the first preliminary round due to their record in Africa. Well, which are teams the best as they prosecute their game this weekend in all the CAF interclub competitions there. And right now, well, uh, we go international. Well, well quickly, let's look at uh, the Premier League 2020 in the fourth season. That's last season. Player, the, the team of the year was actually unveiled by the FA. Let's look at it. We have uh, the Vidraya of Arsenal as the goalkeeper, Saliba, Van Dijk, Magers, uh, Walker as the defenders. Actually, from Arsenal, from Liverpool, Manchester City, you have uh, Rodri, you have Rice, Odegaard uh, in the middle of the park, Manchester City, Arsenal, and also another Arsenal. Uh, in the uh, forward, you have Haaland, Erling, and you have Foden, and you have uh, Watkins. Uh, from Aston Villa, being able to win uh, uh, the team of the year for Premier League, PFA Awards there, uh, well, that actually came out during the week. And you look at it this way. Well, let me start with you. Although briefly, before we go to our matches that I want to look at, I'm sure as an Arsenal, <laughs> Arsenal man, you are happy, right? Your, t t your players always make yeah, the whole yeah. team. I'm very, very happy. It's nice to see those players, you know, where they should be. They, they, their contribution was immense. Even though I wasn't expecting Gabriel Mahalek to be in that spot, I was thinking, you know, uh, Kyle Walker would take that place. But then, it is what it is. They have given him, and he is one of them, and I'm happy that uh, he is one of them because that kind of a reward and a motivation for them to actually do better this season. So as a national fan, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy about it. Okay, you're happy that a national fan actually, as a national fan, you have a lot of players that make that court. Well. Uh, <laughs> not with all due respect to your blue Go, color. Palma, I, uh, I couldn't find any Chelsea player. Well, why is Kopama not there? <laughs> I don't know. Who made uh, Danny? Kopama won an award. Let's go. Okay, let's do, the, do it this way. Let's look at the player of the year. Phil Foden, Phil Foden won the player of the year. Uh, let's have Phil Foden there. And then Kopama, Kopama won the uh, PFA Young Player of the Year. So are you satisfied now? No, not yet. Not yet. If you, if, 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 he, if he has that award as a young player of the year, so why is he not in the team? Hmm. That's my question. Maybe he's a man from Canada. Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let, let, let me do something. Since you want Palmer to be there, let's go back to that list, that team of this uh, of the year, uh, quickly. Okay, good. So who do you, where, where do you want Palmer to be here? What do, there Which is play? Oregon, there is Rice, there is there so is, there is Rice. For? So why not, why, why are you not taking out Rice from the team? <laughs> <laughs> why are you not taking out Rice from okay, the team? This. this is where I wanted to come in. Now, as it, you now <laughs> say you want Palmer to take the place of Rice, declare Rice of Arsenal, yeah. and I have an Arsenal fan here. Uh, Joe, this is for you. The battle is drawn. <laughs> You know, I'm just, I'm just here laughing, and I, and I like the fact that you, you know, showed him that list and asked him that question. Because mm. who would he want to drop and play Palmer? Really? And is that for me, rice? you know, I, I, heard, I heard him, you know, trying to drop uh, Rice. They don't play the same position. What they got? They don't play the same position. Rice cannot, um, um, Palmer cannot produce what these ones are actually produce when they, when they play those positions. So maybe he should argue with all the... Or, or maybe argue with Haaland or the Watkins, but not any of the Arsenal players. Why is he going for Arsenal? He should call and 
whoever is playing the position of Palmer is playing and maybe try to slot him into the team. But we all know that, you know, in that front three, he cannot touch anybody. They all mm. played actually very, very well last season. Let, let, that let, let, that let, me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. When you are talking about position, I don't think this lineup will actually give you a better 11 if you are looking at the position. Because you had working as a point man, you also had a Haaland as a point man. So where are you putting working to? You are you putting working to the left or to the right? Okay, Fielding is occupying one position of this. So where are you putting it? If you are bringing folding down, are you taking working up or are you taking uh, Haaland up? So that is just the issue. I am just looking at the, the number, the 11, the adjustment, and I'm looking at the 11 and I'm saying Cole Palmer should be there. That is what I'm saying. Football is all about, you know, defense, midfield, attack. All right, so this kind of this 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 squad was actually pulled to arrange in that format. In give, the defense, we give, have give Cole Palmer an attack in the midfield. It's okay, there's no problem. <laughs> well, so what do you think about <laughs> anyway, that? Cole, Cole, Cole Palmer is not on that list. Cole Palmer is not on that list, and there is nothing else you can do about it. You should be praying for yourself and no, what I'm, you guys are going I'm to do. I'm thinking this that you are, are maybe 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 you are part of the those that made the list. That is what I'm thinking. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> that's why Cole Palmer is not there. Because for me, I think Cole Palmer I, should be there. Young, energetic, able to produce the result he produced last season. The number of goals he scores, the assists, and the important. He was the best player as long as Chelsea's team is consigned. And he's competing with the players that made the first team, the, the number one and the second, first and second. And you're saying he should not be there. He should be there, please. Call Palmer, please. I'm vowing for Coach Palmer. Palmer should be there, please. <laughs> if, if, I, if, I was the one, if I was the one that actually made that list, Cole Palmer would not ever win the PFP player of the year. So just thank your God that I'm not the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who should have been the uh, PFA Young Player of the Year? Uh, Joseph. I, I'm looking at um, Gordon. I'm looking at Gordon. Uh, and I'm thinking, you know, he, his, his uh, performance for Newcastle actually is good. I'm looking at um, um, Odringa, or this, this, this young player for, for Brighton. Mm. I'm actually looking at that player also because he did quite well last season. So, you know, there are a lot of other players that you'd want to look at. But, you know, Kolpama is well-deserved. I'm not going to, you know, uh, I'm not Thank going to be you. Thank you. He deserved that award. Thank you. Uh, and, but, but he does not get into the Premier League uh, squad of the year. He doesn't get in. Oh, okay, okay. Let, let's, let's even leave that aside. Okay, so over the weekend, I remember last weekend when Chelsea was about to meet Manchester City and uh, uh, the man in blue, Julius Okafor, was really at least hoping that his club will be able to do something. I want to ask him, how market, Julius? <laughs> <laughs> it's a football game. You always hope for your team uh, and their weak points, so you should have been able to study that and see, be able to work on it. But I think uh, it's all about not being able to convert chances. I think Chelsea need a point man and they need a striker assistance now. That is just me. They need a striker, a striker. and a Get out of see me, please. Okay, okay. Joseph, uh, just in a nutshell, your take on that match before we go for the matches for this weekend. Uh, like you said, the best, the best team won. Um, uh, although, you know, I could see some flashes of, you know, structure to, to Chelsea's gameplay. You know, not, not unlike before when they are just playing, you don't even know what they are trying to do. Right now, you, can, you could see something, you know, they're trying to, you know, put something in order. And that's the only thing that I think that I take away that is a positive for them in that game. But, you know, deservingly, Man City won and... The, the best player on the pitch, which is Haaland for Man City, actually was the one who got the goal. So it, 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 it's actually, you know, how we all expected it to, to, to turn out. Okay, well, uh, Manchester City, Chelsea, behind now, the first match that they played during the league season right now. But now we're looking at match day two. Premier League is coming up this weekend. Matches are coming up. And also, we've been talking about uh, other ones, but uh, quickly, a Premier League fixture match day two fixtures. We have Brighton against Manchester United, Crystal Palace against West Ham, Fulham at home in London against uh, Leicester City. If we start against Manchester City, <laughs> what a match! Southampton, Nottingham Forest, Tottenham Hotspur, Everton. We have Aston Villa at home against Arsenal, the Villa Park, Bournemouth, Newcastle United, Chelsea away to Wolverhampton Wanderers, and Liverpool at home against Brentford. Well, for these matches, we know that, uh, yes, match day one is gone. Brighton sitting comfortably at the top of the table, surprisingly. Now, they play against Manchester United to herald it. 
a big one coming up there. So, quickly, Joseph, of all these matches, which one is actually catching your eyes, Joseph Peter? Actually, the one, you know, I'm looking forward to is the Arsenal game against Aston Villa. We all know why Arsenal did not win the league last year was because of the loss, you know, against Aston Villa, both home and away, which were not expected. Because, you know, if you look back at those two games, Arsenal played better. Arsenal were supposed to win those games, but they couldn't take their chances. And uh, therefore, they got to lose against Villa uh, you know, 1-0 at home at Villa and then 2-1 uh, at um, Otuni, rather, at uh, the Emirates. So this, I believe, is a kind of um, a revenge mission for Arsenal. That's for the fans to actually, you know, get our revenge for, for them for how they stopped us from winning the league last year. Because if Arsenal had won against uh, Aston Villa last year, then we wouldn't be even talking about Arsenal as, you know, a title contender, but rather they would be the champions. But it is what it is that happened. I just hope that the players now see the game as a game for three points not, you know, going for events. Because sometimes when you want to go for events, that only goes and, you know, catch it up on you and you end up, you know, not getting it. So that game is going to be a very, very tough game, considering the two coaches are very, very good top coaches, considering the, you know, the rivalry that has already, you know, kind of, been kind of, you know, created because of the past season results. And also looking at the fact that Arsenal are actually looking to go all the way this time, this season. So for you to win the league this season, you need to start well and end well. They have started well, but they need to continue. They, they are the, the next the next games after this one are not going to be easy because we have uh, Tottenham, we have Man City ahead. So this, I think, is even the easier game. You know, if you're looking at the next three games, so they need to take the maximum point. It's not going to be easy. It's at Villa Park. It's going to be loud, but I think they will be able to pull it up. Okay, why well, is going to be loud? How loud it is? <laughs> is he going to be? Is it loud for us now or loud for Aston Villa? Well, all this will be coming up in the match between Aston Villa and Arsenal, uh, the Villa Park. Now, Wolverhampton Wanderers against Chelsea. Julius Okafor, that game, uh, at least as expected, uh, Chelsea should be able to ride, have a smooth ride on this. They should be able to win. They should be able to have a smooth ride. They should be able to let us know that they are ready for this year. Uh, season. They should let us know that whatever preparation that they are preparing, that it's time to put it into action. So they should be able to, to, to win that game. I'm not even looking at that game. I'm looking at Arsenal match as the main game of the week because I'm, <laughs> I'm believing uh, Aston Villa is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to do what they know how to do. But for Chelsea, if they don't win, I'm not supporting Chelsea again. Seriously? I'm leaving them and I'm moving to Rangers International full time. Seriously. I'm not supporting them anyway. because I don't expect anything less than a win. Okay, no, well, talking about the matches for this weekend in the Premier League match day two, we're just looking at those fixtures there. But Liverpool playing against Brentford, another big one there. But uh, Brighton, uh, Brighton uh, actually stand at top of the league. They play against Manchester United. Uh, let's actually uh, touch on this. Brighton and Hobie Albion, we know this is a team that uh, uh, rejuvenated seriously. Uh, they've been able to hold their own, and they play against Manchester United. Joseph Peter, in the north, just in a brief, uh, do you see uh, Brighton shocking Manchester United in this game? It is very, very possible. It is very, very possible. It's Brighton we are talking about. We know how compact and attacking they can be. We know the, they are flair in, on their wings when they have uh, uh, the likes of Mitoma and the likes of Odinga on the, on the wing. We know what those boys can do. We've seen them do it before. We've seen how they've humiliated, humiliated uh, Manchester United before. So it won't be something new for me. Although you argue that Manchester United are actually far better than they were last season. They have better personnel, they have, you know, better structure, and, you know, they have pumped up after their last win against uh, Fulham. But Fulham is not right. Brighton is actually tougher. So I would expect this game to be a bit, you know, tough for Manchester United, and I expect a lot of goals in this game, as usual, when the those two actually meet. But, you know, uh, I wouldn't write off Man United in this situation. Um, Bruno is actually doing well and uh, playing well, and I think that uh, that will grossly affect the game. So I might want to, you know, think towards Manchester United, even though, you know, Brighton are not an easy right. Okay, well, we've been running through the Premier League fixtures for this weekend. Uh, a tough one for teams like uh, 
uh, Liverpool against uh, Brentford, Brighton against Manchester United. You have uh, Aston Villa against Arsenal. Not forgettable, Vapsi Wanderers against Chelsea, where the Chelsea man in the studio says, well, if Chelsea doesn't win that game, uh, it won't be Chelsea fans anymore. Well, I just hope that you, <laughs> you fulfill your promise <laughs> if they lose against the Vapsi Wanderers. No, they're going to gonna win. They're going to win. That's mm. not true. They, they, they have to keep me as one of their fans, so they just have to win. <laughs> <laughs> as if they know you. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've been talking about this match day two of the Premier a lot of matches coming up this weekend. Football weekend over there in Europe. Top five weeks in Europe. I've quickly run through. And for Manchester City, yes, they are happy that they got their man, former player back. Ike Gondwan is back. And uh, right now, uh, <laughs> the coach can't just uh, wait to have him. At least uh, for Manchester City, uh, getting him back from Barcelona, that's a plus. He said he was shocked that Gondwan will be coming back. I'm talking about Guardiola. He's, he's, uh, he's a good one for Man City. And he said he's happy having him back. When, when he left, he left a vacuum for them that they struggle to to fill in they get a player from wolf to come in to see how they can up up it so for him coming back is a good one and for the gondo one is also happy coming back because sometimes when you left a place you begin to feel the impact and you begin to know how important that place is he has gone to barcelona and he has realized how big man city is so when he comes knocking on his door i don't think he has any other choice than to come back well a That's good it. one a good one for yiki gondo one getting his group back over there in manchester city uh, he will be back with them and now everything goes well with that team let's see what they'll be offering this season it's a big battle among the 20 teams in the Premier League, and it's a tough one. Who, will, who actually will win the league this season? Which coach will be sacked first? We don't know. <laughs> a big one coming up in the Premier League. Coach, players, all of them ganging against themselves to see who stays top and who actually goes down for the season before it ends there. Now, quickly, we run through some matches that will be coming up. Spanish La Liga will be coming up there for the weekend. La Liga uh, will be uh, having matches, uh, being played match day two. Looking at those fixtures there for Real Madrid, they will also be playing against another Real team but this time around Valladolid, Getafe against Rayo Balicano, Sociedad against Espanyol, Barcelona at home against Athletic Club, while Mallorca play away to Osasuna, Madrid Atletico they play at home at the Wanda Metropolitano against Girona, why so that the Vigo are away to Villarreal uh, for Deportivo Alaves against Real Betis another match, Las Palmas against Liganes those are the matches for this weekend in the Spanish La Liga, Real Madrid Real Valladolid, big match coming up there. But for Sevilla, for Sevilla, they blew the opportunity yesterday. What a match they play and they lost that game. Uh, well, for Sevilla, they need to get their acts together. AJK, yes, he played well, the Nigerian. And also, uh, a, a tough one for Kelechi Anacho. He needs to get his, his group back. He really needs to do that. But for AJK, he did so well in that game, even though they lost that particular game there. Well, for the Spanish La Liga, we just saw the fixtures there. For German Bundesliga, matches also be coming up. Uh, with all the teams, Freiburg, Stuttgart, we have newcomers, Austin Kerr against Offenheim, Mezzo 5 Union Berlin, Bryce against Bochum, Borussia Dortmund at home against Eintracht Frankfurt, Bayern Munich, big one coming between them and against uh, Wolfsburg at the Vogt uh, Volkswagen Arena, St. Pauli, newcomer, they are back, and you have Eddie Hem also playing, Vada Bremen against Augsburg, uh, those are the matches in the uh, German Bundesliga, but the big one there is Wolfsburg versus Bayern. And there are people that support that actually follow uh, Bundesliga. We want to see this match. And quickly, Italian City are also matches uh, up there in the match day two fixtures where we have Parma, Milan, Udinese, Lazio, Lecce, way to Inter Milan at uh, San Siro, Monza, Genoa, Fiorentina, Venezia, you have Torino, Atalanta, Bologna, way to Napoli. And we have Roma against Empoli, Como, newcomers against Cagliari, Battle of the Sea teams, and you have Juventus against Hellas Verona. Those are the matches slated for this weekend in the Italia City. Uh, match the two fixtures. And quickly, let's look at French League One. Matches also up there for PSG. They did well, spanking their, the team they faced 6 0. Congrats to PSG. But the big ones between Lyon and Monaco also coming up this weekend. Lille Engas, Le Hever against Saint Etienne, Lens against Brest, Nantes, Oxa, Moses Simon's team is Nantes. And want to see him play in that game. OGC needs was us to do while well, you have Strasbourg against Reims. Reims are away to Marcel. Those are big games coming up this weekend uh, between Lyon and AS Monaco. What a battle coming up over there in the French League. On well, we have to look at uh, Super Eagles uh, player who has actually done his best when it comes to playing football. And right now, he has pitched a tent with a Saudi Pro League team. His name is. Uh, 
truce aircon al kaludo saudi arabia complete super eagles uh, uh, defenders uh, signing well good one for uh, this man called truce aircon he has played in greece south polonica he was in Turkey with busaspo and all that but right now he's in saudi arabia he will be playing for al kalud at least it to is, deal. It's good for him searching for a regular play because that is what matters in football. Uh, last season, he only he only finished in ten games, all through, probably because of injury, he wasn't able to play. So I think um, he's looking for a regular play. We hope that he stays fit because if he stays fit, he's capable. He's a good player. He has something to offer. A lot of experience. The new promoted team will enjoy his lack of his experience into their team and we hope that he continue to to get a regular play to enable him possibly get a call back to to the super eagle that is what we're expecting yeah for for aircon uh, a big one there for the fact that he has signed two years and a lot of people want to see look at the fact that the oil money is still flowing mm. and he has joined them there two years will be with al kalud and he will try to see how he can do well joseph peter i'm sure this move also is a good one for him this time around because uh, at least the two-year deal will at least allow him to also uh, earn some good money in Saudi Arabia. Very, very happy for Trusekon. I believe he had a very, very satisfying career. As far as I'm concerned, played a lot of clubs in, the Euro in Europe and did quite well. And, uh, you know, his uh, performance at, uh, at Nikos last season was not down to... Uh, because he wasn't big, because he wasn't doing, you know, he wasn't training well, or he, because of a lack, uh, a lack of good uh, performance. It's all down to injury. He, he, mm -hmm. he was injured most of last season. That is why, you know, he wasn't featured a lot. And then now to secure a move to where the money is and actually, you know, uh, tone down his career in this style is actually a very, very great thing for him. And uh, we're happy for him. And we still want him in our national team because we believe he is far better than a couple of them that we have seen there. And even though he is going to play in um, a less competitive league, uh, we wish him the very, very best. And we hope that you know he could get to you know um, enjoy the rest of his career as a Saudi Pro League player. Joseph Peter, thank you so much for joining us from Kaduna. We appreciate your time with us. Hopefully, your team will win against Aston Villa. Thank you so much. We are win we are going to win against Aston Villa, but Wolves are not going to lose Aston Villa against is beating us. you Just, guys. You are not winning. I don't know why why I'm not very, very 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 positive thinking Arsenal is okay. winning to us. Okay. okay. I, 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 because of our time, uh, maybe next time both of you will continue <laughs> this particular round called they are concerning your clubs. Well, thank you so much, Joseph Peter. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, just uh, Julius Okafor, for I want to appreciate your time with us in the studio. You are really battling with the Arsenal man. It's always a no, big I don't one. want to give him that 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 notion that they're going to win Aston Villa because they are, they they can't do it. Mm. Aston Villa right now is up the game when you are taking on the, the top system. You just you have go, to go you, now. You get, Thank you, you get so them much. There. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Julius Okafor. Thank you so much. Well, it's always a good one talking sports on the show. We can sport on Trust TV. Our time is up and we just have to go now. For you out there that join us throughout the show, we want to thank you once more. And I'm Adini Yajishafe. Sport is always business and fitness. Have a splendid weekend.